was when rap first came and rap actually was a response a natural response to the removal of music appreciation from the schools and they began to take music i remember there used to be <clears throat> uh in along all over in the black communities when i was coming up there were these pawn shops and these pawn shops had these instruments hanging in the window and you could go all over the black community, anywhere in the poorest community, there was always somebody with a pawn shop, some Jewish dude with a pawn shop that had a guitar or a sax hanging in the window. And black children passing by every day would see that and would then be talking about that, well, you know, let me, let me see that and get the, get the feel and get the touch. And then when they go to school, you have uh, music appreciation, you'd learn music. All of this was what was necessary for black people to develop both sides of their brain. They knew what it was that actually was the inspiration in the 60s with all the types of uh, poetry that was coming out, the music, uh, when you had uh, people like the last poets, Gil Scott Heron, uh, Leroy Jones, and, and all of the music that came out of um, uh, Philadelphia International and uh, the kind of music that was coming out, like Ain't No Stopping Us Now. They know that black people are definitely inspired by their music. So in order to take that part away from them, that learning instrument from them, they snatched it from the schools, shut it down, and called it incidental and inconsequential, which is nonsense, because they kept it in the white schools. Mm -hmm. But they took it out of the black schools. And, of course, the white schools also began suffering because, again, I keep telling white folks that they niggas too. They don't understand that nigger is a condition, not a person. Okay, so white people can be niggers too because the conditions they create create niggers. Yes, they create conditions to create them. So white folks thought they were isolated. Oh, that's just happening to them black folks, them no niggers. Well, guess what? You're losing your homes at twice the numbers of black folks. So now you're out in the streets. You have nothing. You don't do any. You're talking about, oh, my God, the government. Oh, we don't have any more money. Well, welcome to our world. <laughs> okay? So what it is I'm saying is that when you take music away from the children, especially at that age, you take away that part of the learning process, especially when it has to do with culture. Culture, taking away the music or the ability to access that spiritual part of your, of your mind and your being. See, when you pick up an instrument, we used to call an instrument, not an instrument, we used to call it the spirit catcher. The ancients called a, music, a musical instrument a spirit catcher because when you played it or when you mastered it, you could catch the spirit with it. And you could bring the spirit out in other people. And so when you take that ability from a mass of people, because back when I was coming up, everybody could play an instrument. I couldn't play most of the instruments. I could play a, a bongo and I could play the harmonica, but they had brothers that could play pianos. I mean, everywhere you went, some brother was with an instrument. Yes, sir. And those were the ones that were the intelligent ones, even the hoods who played a little instrument, a little piano. They may be uh, running the streets, but they had a little something there that they knew about music. They could sit down and talk about train and everything. And, and understand that. But that eclectic part of our culture was taken from us, and the response to that was the hip-hop rap community that took our music and used it as samples to speak and to forward the message until it was co-opted by uh, the, uh, the, the Moshad and the rest of those who wanted to control the message in our black community. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to go back to the callers right now. We're going to go back to Miss Seven. Eric Code 219980. Did you want to chime in now? Yes, I do. Thank you so very much for bringing this topic to the forefront. Um, I concur with what Brother Valentine is saying. I am a former teacher, retired teacher, who happens to be uh, a Sylvan Learner um, uh, adjunct faculty. So I get brought in to do quite a bit of things with the children in Sylvan Learning. And what I have found is that music is so universal that they knew I taught children from a perspective of music, and I was working with families of children that were three and four years old, and the way we were mastering them learning the phonetics and being able to decode was through music. And they often, uh, you know, uh, they often inquired about how my children were learning to enunciate, to speak, and to read, and these children were going out of the preschool reading. And I indicated to them, with music, you, you can pretty much teach a child to process. And a 
norm, a number of us teachers who were on panels who were working with curriculum, they were trying to weed out the best of the curriculum. And a few of us black women were fighting to bring in the music. They wanted to eliminate music. And we put our foot down to tell them, if you go into Caucasian school, the predominant programs, there are three sessions or levels of music class. It is so overwhelming that if you go there now, music is throughout the curriculum and it is systemically placed there so it can't be removed, yet our children are being desecrated and ripped apart with music being taken out of the curriculum. I am a gospel singer, so I bring music to the classroom and I know that this is what caused my children to learn rhythm, to learn math, and spiritually I was able to reach them. So it is something that if we place back in the curriculum, we can save our children with it. They have an octic level of higher of ability to hear sounds that no other race can hear. So you can reach them. Right. And I believe if we brought this back, it would make a difference. They know that. That's why they're trying that. That's why they know. That's why they don't want to bring that back, sister. That's the music starts opening up that first eye and make children begin to see, begin to imagine, to go into into visions of their of their own uh, genetic realities, bringing back ancestral energies. You know, forwarding that energy. They needed to stop that. These people know exactly how to scientifically shut us down. But we have to bypass all of that. And you were speaking about private school? Well, they got to be a heck of a lot more private schools. This sister is a retired teacher, and she has an expertise that is, that is there, and I know is still vibrant and ready to be used. And this is what I tell to most of my brothers and sisters out there. If you really want to try to do a real private school system, get the sisters and brothers together in a community, and each one of them give up 25 or $50. If you have 25 people and they give up 10 or 20 or $30 each, and you have 20 to 20, 10 to 20 children in that, you can pay the salary of one who has been retired. And the retired teachers Absolutely. who have the, the skills to be able to deal with what I call three-dimensional teaching and three-dimensional learning, that's what our children are missing. And they would have that nurturing, and we would be teaching them what we want them to be taught, not bringing those, sending those children out to our enemies and having the stranger come back through the doors. Absolutely. Brother Valentine, we have another caller queued up. Area code eight zero three two six zero. Talk to Ms. Dino Dean. Did you have a question or a comment for the master, Dr. Phil Valentine? Dr. Phil Valentine, how are you, sir? I'm well, sir. Who's Charles, this? Charles Brooks. I'm the chair of the fine arts department at Benedict College. Look, uh, one of the things that I get into the young men just from Jump Street when I engage with them on campus. It's what we used to do when I was growing up in New York when the older brother would stop a younger, younger brother. And what we used to call the gabbing, where we would yeah. measure one another and all this mm -hmm. the critical thinking right then and there on the spot. Mm -hmm. And I find that they, they really uh, respond to that. And, and mm -hmm. you know, perhaps maybe that might be what rapping is doing. I don't know. But I, I always tell my students I got my first degree called streetology. Then I progressed up to the level of education on into the universities. I graduated from Columbia University many years ago. Mm -hmm. But the art and the music, I want to kind of get back to that just a little bit because uh, I think that's, that's, it's, been, it's been turned around and used against us mm -hmm. through commercialization. It is taken, and you know, throughout the years, I remember when we used to sit and listen to Tommy Dr. Jive Small, and then all of a sudden there was Elvis Presley, and he was the king. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then there was, then there was, uh, rap came out, and then Eminem received the World Award. Yeah, yeah. You, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The yes, top I do award exactly. for rap. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> yes. Everybody gets crowned but us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and then we kind of, it kind of get lost every time we come up. So, I, you know, it's almost like I'm saying, well, look, the next time we come out with something, let's kind of hold on to it for a little while <laughs> and let it generate and circulate among ourselves before before we send it out in the mainstream so that we can get the pure mix of it all. Because we're talking about developing that critical thinking I heard you talking about earlier so we can critically ana uh, analyze what is being said and projected around us. Mm -hmm. To miss media, I pass mm -hmm. it to you. Yes, okay. sir. Well Brother, said. thanks for the call, and don't be a stranger to the show. I appreciate you. <laughs> well said. Well said. And the brother uh, reminds me of something that um, 
what's his name, Cedric the Entertainer said in a movie when uh, the um, one of the bad guys called him a nigger. And I think it was in uh, Be Cool. Uh, with 